Graham Vincent, violin maker, musician. Um, I am in the car today and um, with my brother, hey, Peter Vincent. And um, yeah, I thought it'd be really interesting, seeing as I'm on the way to get on board a ship to go off and play music for a few weeks, to actually sort of talk to my brother who uh, has spent his life um, working with his hands, completely different um, sort of career path to mine. He's been a farrier, so shoeing horses and so on. But nevertheless, he also has been very much into making stuff for himself. He, he's, that's, he's been at it non-stop, really, for rather a longer period of time than we both like to talk about, really. Um, yes, yeah, so I thought it'd be really interesting if we talk about your favourite tool. OK, so you've got to pick one tool that you use. One, one tool that you, for you, is the best the one that you couldn't do without. So my, yeah, my vital tool, well, I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna have two. Okay, well, all right, right. where are you? Yeah, he's, I'm gonna cheat. I'm he's gonna breaking cheat. the rules already. Yeah, that's my life. Um, I would have my cat's head, two and a half pound shoe turning hammer, which I was given by the Worshipful Company of Farriers as a new apprentice in 1980, just for nostalgic reasons. And the other thing I would have is my father's um, wood adds, which I can remember him using when we were doing up a cottage in Wales many, many years ago. I remember that as well. And yeah. I still have it, still with its leather blade cover, everything. Fantastic. And that's like talking to my dad. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. So what um, what makes the cat's head sort of um, hammer special? Um, a, it was a gift from the Worshipful Company as I entered my apprenticeship. And B, it's a very old fashioned English made hammer. And the reason it's called a cat's head is it has two lumps sticking out of the side. Ah, I think I know the very which, one. Yes, yeah. which yeah. you use for pulling down clips and uh, certain forging exercises, which are not that common nowadays um, because most farriers, I don't want to upset the farrier profession, but the majority of farriers use a machine-made shoe purely for economic reasons. Um, well, there are I mean, they're, 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 I say they're, they're not a, they're not an exception in, in uh, industry in using machines to do things, are they? Let's be honest. No, so, no. Yeah. But, uh, no, those are my two tools. I couldn't have. Yeah, and the um, and so the ads. Do you actually use it for anything? Yes. Yeah, it gets what, used all the time. What do you use it for? Uh, roughing out shapes in timber. Um, occasionally for digging holes in the ground, just because I'm a bit of a of a tool abuser um, but I always clean it up afterwards and make sure it's shiny yeah. give it a coat of um, linseed oil which forms a skin over the cutting surfaces so they don't rust presumably um, I mean do you ever sharpen it I've never had to sharpen you never it. had to sharpen it because it, okay what about I mean the ha hammer as such doesn't really need much maintenance does it uh, what about what about a handle? Have you how many? No, it's still on the original handle. I it's find a, it's a good quality that. hickory handle. Okay. Do you ever oil it or anything like that? Yes, again, it gets linseed. When it's not being used for any period of time, it'll get a good coat of linseed. Right. That stops it drying out, which is the death to all hammers once they start to dry out in between uses. Because I suppose the head becomes loose and all sorts of that. The head becomes loose yeah. and then yeah. you start to break fibers in the handle. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, I find that interesting. I hope you do as well. I, I think what I'll probably do is anytime I'm kind of with anyone who works with their hands, who uses tools, I'm probably going to do a similar sort of little video, to be honest. Um, so yeah, look after yourselves, folks. See you soon. Cheers. Bye.